What's up guys, it's Matt Collins-Jones here, also known as a D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate, and we're looking at the Office 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at the action, which is Get Email V2. So I'm calling it the Office 365 Outlook Connector. Um, I commented on Twitter that I didn't know what the name would be called today when I went to make the video, and someone from Microsoft, Manuela Pitler, um, she uh, contacted me to say the name, the name change had actually been rolled back, due to some customer feedback about not being able to find certain things going through tutorials. So it's been rolled back for now. It may be rolled back forward uh, into the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector in the future. But for now, I'm just going to refer to it as the Office 365 Outlook Connector. So with, without further ado, um, so the action we'll look at today is get email. So the get email action allows you to get some content about an email. So this can be when you are doing a certain thing, or maybe if uh, you can get this from somewhere else. But the idea is that you pass in the message ID and you can get some content from the email. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in my flow here. I have a trigger, which is when a new email arrives that we'll be using. And then click on new step. And then in here, I can search for Office 365. <laughs> Uh, Outlook Connector, choose that one, and we can scroll down until we get to the action which is Get Email V2. So the Get Email V2, uh, it only has one required parameter which is the ID of the email or the message ID. So in this instance I'm going to choose the uh, message ID uh, message ID from that trigger. You may be able to get this in a different way using uh, you know, Microsoft Graph or other, or other methods, but in this instance, I'm just gonna use that trigger. We also have a box here for the original mail, mailbox address. So this is similar to the other triggers uh, or the other actions where you can specify a shared email address where this email may have gone into. So you don't necessarily have to set this up on your own email address. It can be a shared mailbox that you have access to. If you put the, the email in there, uh, the email address of the mailbox in there, it will pick it up and you can get emails from different mailboxes. There's also this include attachments and it has a yes, no attached to it. So I originally thought this was a filter. So this would only trigger uh, or this would only do an action if there was a um, if there was an attachment or not. Now, because it was an action, it didn't really make a lot of sense to me why there would be a filter. So I looked into it, I did some testing, and what this actually does is this tells this tells the action whether it's going to retrieve the attachment or not. And again, I'm going to kind of show a little bit about that um, as we go through. So I'll set, set this to yes for now, and we'll test it out and we'll see what we get. So we'll hit test, I'll perform the trigger action, we'll save and test and that will go off running. So, I'm going to switch over to my Gmail account. I've got this uh, this email queued up here. So I've got matt.collins at uh, services group using my maiden name. I've got this flow emails. Uh, I've got yo go with the flow man in the, in the body. And I've also got an attachment. So I'm going to hit send on that. And I'm going to go back to my flow. I'm going to switch to my Outlook. And in my Outlook, I'm going to wait for this email to arrive. Um, as you can see, I've got a previous one where I've been testing, and there we go, we get this one. So we've got this, uh, we've got the email, we've got the attachment, all that sort of stuff. We go back to our flow. Flows run successfully. That's all good. <clears throat> Sorry. Then we can expand your email, and we can see the stuff that we got. So. We've got this, so we've got the email address that's come from the direct 365 geek at gmail.com. Got who it's to. We've got the subject. We've got the body, and we've got the body in HTML. It does have a flag somewhere that says is HTML. It's right at the bottom. True. So this is a HTML email. But, uh, I guess if the body wasn't HTML, it would just be uh, text in here. We have the importance. We have the has attachment. True, which is one of the things that we know. The body preview, so this is without without the HTML, which is great. The message ID, internet message ID, and conversation ID. Receive time, so what time was it received? Uh, is is read false? So we've not read it yet by the time we've um, by the time this flow is triggered. And we've also got the attachment details. So this is basically saying the other data type is Microsoft.graph.file attachment. So it's saying there's a file attachment on the email. We've got an ID of it. We've got the name of it. We've got the content type. We've got the content in bytes. 
Now this is really interesting. When I was when I was testing this, I was trying to figure out what the difference was between this trigger and uh, sorry this action with the file attachment set to yes and the same action with the file attachment set to no. The difference is actually the content bytes. So when you run it and it and you set that to no as the attachment. You still get this attachment section, you still get all this information, but you do not get the content itself. So if you wanted to use this content and maybe inject it into a, a OneDrive for Business or a SharePoint site to, to hold the document, hold the pictures, whatever, you actually need to set this to yes so that the action knows to bring that, um, that attachment back to do something. So we get all this all this good stuff in terms of um, the the content that we can then use. Um, I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to switch this include attachment to no, and click test. We're going to run from the previous action. So we're going to run this one from two minutes ago. And hit save and test. So I run through fine and then we're going to scroll down uh, has it actually true and this time we do not get that content bytes so that's the difference here is that if you so we still get this whole content section we still get what it is the content type the name of it etc but we do not get the actual content of the attachment so that's a really important thing if you want to be working with the attachment if you want to be doing something with the attachment you do need to set that to yes it doesn't filter based on like if it's not an attachment or not uh, but it is important for if you wanted to be working with that attachment. So I hope this video was useful. Um, if you did find it useful, uh, if you could drop a like and maybe share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.